All right, I want to review a little bit with you um, just the cables. So we're going to get back into EVC here, and for we're going to do a little uh, diagnostics on the diesel engine. So the first thing is an extension cable. So the extension cables, male, female, versus an X3 jet line cable. And you can extend off of an X2 jet line cable if you needed to do that. But this is obviously male, male on the end. All right, so that is what is going to connect from the HCU to the PCU on the engine that we have over here. Now what I want to use this cable for is I want to use it so that I can connect Vodia to the engine up to the helm. So I need to go down to the engine and find the diagnostic link connector on the oldest D6 engines, that's over here, and it's on your connection that comes off your tandem cable that goes to your PCU on the new modern engines. There's a plug connection on the side of the engine on either side that's going to say diagnostics and you plug it in there. So I'm going to plug the male end into the diagnostic and it says right on it diagnostic. And then I'm going to run that up to my Vodia tool. All right, and I'm going to plug that Vocom box in. This way I can get my data link from my Vocom box, which interfaces with a laptop that the Mac will allow you to connect to the engine. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is do a little diagnostics using the breakout box. Now, on the diesel engines, there is this breakout box. Okay, this is a five pin breakout box. It has most of all the connectors on the engine. And that will allow me to plug into the harness and then plug it into the sensor. And that's what I want to do. So the first sensor I'm going to plug into is going to be for the m -prop. That is going to be for the fuel pressure. And I want to check that sensor and I'm going to show you how to check that sensor using the diagnostic manual next. All right, I'm going to use the service manual. This is an older manual. It's a little different in the newer manual, but what I like about the old manual, and I can show you the actual look to it. So basically what we have is we have the M-prop connection here, okay, coming off the high pressure pump, and what the book tells us to do for these codes. So really nice about this is we get into the description, okay, so here is the high pressure pump, it gives you your mid-128, SID 57, that's an M-prop fault. It gives you the FMI, it's a little hard to see, it's not focusing real well. FMI 3 and 9, and then it goes through description. And the other thing that's nice is it has this picture, which shows you the two wires and the color codes coming out of the ECU connection. So the 36 pin connector, from the EDC, which is basically the ECU, pin seven going into the 36 pin and pin five, all right, connect to pins one and pins two. When we plug in the breakout box, it's gonna stay pins one and two. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go through this um, scenario that we have a problem with that. So we've already notified, we've been notified that we have a problem, mid-128 SID 57. We go to the back of the book, we find that code, it brings us to this page, and then we're gonna go into the fault tracing for our FMI 3 and FMI 9, checking the circuit. Real simple. Just follow the diagram and the pictures and go ahead and plug the sensor in. Okay, so the first page is gonna to be to, let's look and see what the value is, and it's gonna be measuring against ground and then into the harness and unplug the M prop. So I'm going to go set that up and I'll show you that. All right, I'm ready to hook the breakout box up. And just so you can see a little bit about this, there's a couple of different two wire connectors. And all you really have to do to identify the correct one is to unplug the M prop. So the connection is back here behind the DC to DC converter, and I've unplugged it. So what I want to do is I want to test the circuit. And let me just, as I hook this up, I'll talk to you a little bit about how that works. So with Bosch processors, what they did 
was the diagnostic engineers figured out that if I take the sensor information, so one of these wires going back is going to be the control wire. So I have voltage going into the actual M-prop, so that's going to be fed by the EDC processor, and then the EDC processor is going to ground and unground the other side of the circuit because this is a solenoid. I'm going to have it at a fixed frequency. I'm going to energize that circuit, and then I'm going to ground and unground it through duty cycle. Now, for diagnostics, that driver or grounding transistor inside the EDC processor, that is going to tell us what the condition is of the circuit. And what so we have a meter. We're going to put our meter on ohms. And the manual tells us that we need to take our meter leads and we take one of the leads and that is going to go to ground. That lead needs to go to the ground, which is over here on the back side of the starter. You cannot use block ground because it's an isolated ground. So the only good ground for this application is the ground stud on the back of the engine. Now, the diagnostic routine in the book has a couple of steps. Number one is shut the power off. That means shut the battery switch off. So I have my meter set on ohms. The next step, it says, is to connect the breakout box, which I've done to the harness. I have left the other connection open, so I am not plugged into the M-prop. I've only plugged into the breakout box and ultimately the harness back to the ECU. The first test is to test for resistance for the driver circuit back to the ECM that's going to ground the circuit, all right? And the other one is to block ground, which is on the starter. So I'm going to reach down here. I put one lead on block ground. I'm going to take my other lead, my little cover off my meter leads, because we got nice new meter leads. And I always want to check my meter to make sure that I have zero. So I do. These are good meter leads. I'm going to put this on my ground, and then I'm going to put this on terminal number one. Now that's going to give me a resistance value, if you can see it of 97,000.8. So 97.8 thousand ohms, okay? And we need to check that value against the book to see if that is correct. The other lead, when we put it on here, should read continuity because that is block ground. All right, so it reads continuity to block ground. So I'm going to look for this lead and this connection to see what we have inside the ECM. So again, waiting for it to balance out 97.8 kilo ohms. For this old book, it gives me a value of between pins one and pins two, all right, which is block ground is the first test, okay? Battery negative is 60 to 86 thousand kilo ohms. Now we read 97,000 kilo ohms. I want to talk a little bit about the meter and about what you're reading. So let's think about this. If it says 60 to 86,000 and I'm reading 97,000, I'm over the limit, but I'm close to that actual value of 80, you know, 60 to 86,000. So it could be the meter, it could be the leads, it could be the breakout box. I have a little more resistance, but not a lot. Now, if I was reading in the millions of ohms, then I would say, yes, I have a problem with a circuit. I've got really high resistance in the circuit. Or if I had low, low resistance, like, you know, zero or 10 ohms, then I would say the circuit is shorted, all right? And the next test, okay, we're gonna go for the next test in the book. And it says the next test I should do is between pins one and two. So I'm going to put my meter lead here and I need to read about the same exact value which is 97.8. So that tells me that that circuit thus far is okay. Now pin two I believe is ground. 